Howdy friends, this is Konstantin, welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia explained by the unusual Russian. Uh, I stream every single day, usually at night, at Uzbekistan time, uh, in the afternoon in the USA and Canada, early morning in Australia, and uh, evening in Europe. But today is an unusual stream. Uh, a stream that I usually don't do in the afternoon in um, Uzbekistan and noon in Moscow. And the reason I'm doing it because there's an event happening right now in Russia. Well, it'll start happening in six minutes. Um, I want to show you this event and I want to comment it. And I'm, I'm waiting for it eagerly because it could be something serious. Now, <clears throat> yesterday in the live stream I did, and I usually every Wednesday do um, news update, news update f of news, world's news, uh, as they're seen in Russia. And one of the news updates was from Transistria. That's a breakaway part of uh, Republic of Moldova, a small state, small but proud state in the very heart of Europe and uh, it has a breakaway part called Transistria. There's been a conflict between Moldova and Transistria since 1991. And a couple days ago, there was an assembly of deputies in Transistria, and they addressed Vladimir Putin, Russian parliament, uh, with an appeal to protect Transistria. Because there are 220,000 Russian citizens living there, and that land needs protection. Well, I heard that before. I heard that happen before. I heard that uh, something like that happened in, in Donetsk and Luhansk republics, part of Ukraine, but they, um, that gangs that they were running them um, addressed Vladimir Putin, and he said, yeah, we'll protect you. And the war in Ukraine started in a couple of days after that. So... Potentially, this is a very dangerous situation, and Vladimir Putin is doing a federal assembly. Once every so often, he um, addresses the both um, houses of Russian parliament. Basically, he's addressing the nation, that's what it is. And then this time, he's also addressing the nation, uh, but officially it's the addressing federal assembly. Now, what's happening is, Usually, at federal assemblies, at addressing the nations, things like that, uh, Vladimir Putin outlines his vision for Russia for some time to come. And I apologize. This time he... Um, I thought that this time his address to the Federal Assembly will be a part of this presidential campaign or, you know, that, that he's getting ready for the presidential elections or you can call it presidential farce, okay? So I figured that just um, part of his campaign and then he will be using this opportunity to address all Russians. But then something in my mind sinister happened two days prior, that's uh, the Congress of the Deputies of Transistria and uh, them asking Vladimir Putin to protect, protect, you know, and we know how Russia protects. So uh, um, uh, without further ado, I'd like to jump and start showing you live. Um, just give me a couple of minutes here because... I'm still trying to figure out. I have not found a resource that I'll be translating in English. I have a couple minutes for that. So um, I think it's worth watching for you to what Putin will have to say. If it's only in Russian, then I'll translate.
So I have in Russian quite a few resources will be translating, and of course the primary source is channel number one. Kanal, первый канал, that's uh, uh, Russia's prime propaganda channel. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to do it in English or not. But you know what, let's start with Russian. Okay, so of course it's a propaganda event, you can say that. Hang on, folks. All right, so it looks like, it looks like this is it. I hope you can see it and hear it. Okay, hang on. Hello. Uh, looks like so Canal One does not show me, does not let me, uh, does not let me. I, I can hear and see well on my computer screen, but I don't know how to share it. Let me shut it down. And I'll use... Uh, Now there's uh folks please bear with me because this is a live event happening and I'm trying to organize everything the best I can. The address will start in a couple of minutes or if not in one minute. That's another screen. And there's no way I could prepare it before because this is a live event happening, you know. So, um, perhaps I can grab YouTube footage. RTVI news, let's try this. See Dmitry Medvedev, all who and who in a click are here. Try this. That widget overlay. You cannot play this video. Why is that so? Ah, uh, I apologize. Propaganda forbids to play videos on some of the uh, YouTube channels. Their own channels. I don't know why. Well, have a good guess. AKI Express. Who the heck is this?
cannot play this video. Mm -hmm. I'll try the first channel again. Everyone's waiting. Putin is always late. Um, I'll try Russia 24. That's another channel that uh, is going to be all Russian channels are staging live events right now. Hang on, folks. Please give me some time. No. Looks like this is it. Looks like we are live. Mm -hmm. For some obvious reason, it's buffering. Okay, and this is the... Uh, Uh, if I go directly to the side, it's going live. If I try to retranslate it, then it's not, it's buffering. Not let me translate. If it doesn't let me uh, translate live, I'll be just telling you, doing the uh, token video. Doesn't let me run. You know, somehow they, they do something that um, that that they don't allow to be retranslated. See, that's where. Folks, I have, um, I see that there are a thousand people watching right now. I'm desperately trying to 
somehow find a way to retranslate Putin's Federal Assembly live to you, so you could see him. Um, well, basically what's happening right now is like before a large concert, there's always a warm-up. And right now there's a warm-up on all national channels. There are different reporters, but they're basically saying the same thing. They give in brief history of previous addresses. Uh, they're, you know, showing uh, first um, the, the, the biggest rulers, the top rulers of Russia who are sitting there in the front row, Dmitry Medvedev. Patriarch Kirill, you know, the heads of Siloviki and so forth. How the hell I do that? How do I? The worst part is it does not let me um, share YouTube. I don't understand why. Uh, perhaps the channels somehow have a feature to close and so you cannot be retranslated. All Russian major YouTube channels and YouTube media and regular media, Khodorkovsky Live and so forth, they're retranslating. I tried RTVI. Um, okay. Um, I'll do something different. Since I cannot uh, find a way to retranslate, Folks, I tried. Um, not much I can do. So I'm going to be watching live and I'm going to be telling you what is happening. So get me, let me get you, let me get my he headphones. <laughs> Sorry. That's what I have for monitors, so you won't be seeing that, what what what's happening in in the microphone. But you'll be you'll be hearing my voice. Okie dokie. Um, Putin is still not there. Propaganda. Well, everyone is still relaxed. Everyone is still... Um, everyone is still... Uh, you know, it feels like there's some time left. And... The address of, for the Federal Assembly must start at the announced time. Okay, it's not like a YouTube live stream when, you know, uh, if you're like a couple of minutes late, it does not affect anyone much. You know, this is the head of the state, must be punctual, and he's not. So, when will it start? 
Very on. You know, uh, funny, I'm watching uh, Canal, Первый Canal, Canal 1, and there you go. Okay, he's coming out. The Tsar is here. He's showed up. Thank you. Please sit down. He starts addressing. It's not the address to the people. It's the address to the elites, the senators, uh, the members of the lower and higher chambers of Russian parliament, Siloviki, you know, ministers, members of the government. He says, uh, I'm going to be addressing you with issues and questions that are required uh, you know, I'm going to give you an agenda of how Russia is going to be living in the next six years. It's talking about different parts of Russian life. This is basically the introduction. Uh, so far, you know, this introduction will be quite lengthy, I think, a few minutes. Trying, but I can't. I'm sorry. All right. Now, right now, Vladimir Putin, as usual, he starts with, he counts the so-called victories of Russia. He's saying that been Russians have been able, United have been able to defeat terrorism. And everyone, of course, applauding. Meaning, you know, a special military operation. That's what they call the war of Ukraine. That's what it is. Defeating the terrorism. Anything together, every, anything is possible. <clears throat> we will get over everything. That's what he's saying. Unbelievable. Vladimir Putin is saying that uh, Russia is so proud to be merciful and full of empathy. <laughs> I make a stream after stream after stream saying how Russia is one of the worst things is people have lost empathy. And now Vladimir Putin totally defies me. He comes out and says, one of our biggest um, advantages is that we're empathetic. We have empathy. Incredible. Incredible. <sighs> He's saying how Russia is... Um, Russian military industrial complex is producing weapons, uh, you know, shift after shift after shift, three shifts a day. See if I can uh, talking about the front lines. Mm. 
Nope, somehow they're blocking. Folks, they're blocking it. Well, I can definitely do video, but, you know, later, but I can't do live. I'm trying to use a website called RBC, RBK. And yes, there's a error occurred during loading. No kidding. They don't want to see you. They want you to see the address. They they just it's for Russians and the Russian elites only. It's not for you. Uh, so far, you know, what I'm looking for, what I'm waiting is uh, the details. Now it's just general talk. The Western evil West is here. The collective West, evil West. Instead of free Russia, the West needs dependable dying land. They can say whatever they want, but that's what they really want. Dependable dying land. They're going to do to Russia the same thing that they did to many other countries, including Ukraine. They want to weaken us from the inside. But they're wrong. They made a mistake. They are facing the firm position of our people. Christians and Muslims, Buddhists and uh, Jewish I don't know how to translate it. I'm sorry. So Russians United have been saying that the unity of Russian people uh, is a mighty force. All together, shoulder to shoulder, they're fighting for Russia. And in the future, we'll be protecting our freedom. Us and only us will be defining our path. We're going to be building Russia according to the traditions, to our culture, and so forth. Defense and strengthening of Russia's sovereignty is everywhere. And in the first place, it's in the front lines. He's thanking the soldiers. Vladimir Putin is thanking the soldiers and uh, feeling sad about the fallen warriors. How many? Oh, he's um, announcing a minute of silence. One question. Why doesn't he say how many people died in Russia at least? No, we're talking business. Well, he's talking business. He's saying that Russians, Russian armed forces have gained lots of experiences. And our, our, our troops, he's saying, our armed forces are much more experienced, much harder, than the, much stronger, mightier than they were before. Because they've been getting experience for the past two years. No kidding. Oh, he's seeing the problems. But he also understands what needs to be done and the work uh, on improving is continuously happening. Oh, 
Again, we did not start this war. We are doing everything we can to stop it. Double face palm. Oh, folks, I'm ashamed when I hear that. It's not us who started this war. He addressed the nation. He addressed the Russians. He addressed me saying, I made the decision to start the special military operation. That's how they call the war. Now he says, it wasn't me. It wasn't us. It wasn't me. I'm trying to finish it. Yeah, right. Now he's um, bragging about how Russia is in possession of uh, brand new technological high-tech weapons. So he's basically describing the weapons that Russia has used in this war, Kinjal, Tsirkon. Uh, other missiles you know Poseidon of course that uh, weapons, weapon of mass destruction that travels under seas no one knows whether it's really whether it really exists or not but he's bragging about that and this is what he's doing right now for the past five minutes he's been bragging about Russian weapons he's trying to scare the west and he's trying to um, increase morale of Russians. All Russian people, be so proud. You have so many weapons that can kill other people. Nice. Interesting. Russia is open to dialogue with the United States of America. So please understand me. He is upset that the elites of the United States are trying to hard, hurt Russia and weaken it. And they're openly saying that we want to um, strategically defeat Russia. <laughs> he said that the West is spreading the fakes of him, Putin, trying to use nuclear weapons in space. It says it's fakes. Fakes. They spread in the fakes, but they're blocking, he's saying, they're blocking our proposal uh, to place nuclear weapons in space for 15 years now. They've been blocking it. He's bashing Biden and his aides. So he's saying that current political elites, current ruler leaders, ruling leaders, uh, you know, we, 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 they're not serious. We cannot negotiate with them. I understand where he's taking it. He's complaining about the West, basically. No good bombs. Using all situations to their own advantages and things like that. But then he's addressing the West. If you want to discuss uh, peace, if you want to discuss uh, stability, then we need to do it together and so forth. Oh, the West is trying to involve Russia into the new arms race. See, it doesn't make any sense. Putin just said that there's a new arms race, and he is so proud about new weapons and people working three shifts, and this is uh, such a great advantage of Russia. And now, five minutes later, he's saying, oh, the West is trying to get us into a new arms race. He contradicts himself, folks. He 
his name in problems of Russia and of Russian armed forces. And he says that that admits that there are problems. And he says that the, one of the st uh, strategical goals of Russia is to upgrade and modernize armed forces. Not just the weapons, but how it's run. No kidding, genius. Um, oh, NATO just expanded. And he says that the western parts of Russia must be strengthened. New members Sweden and Finland are threats to Russia now. The West continues to lie. Now they're lying saying Russia will attack Europe. This is this is nonsense. They're delusional. And at the same time themselves they're selecting targets willing to strike the Russian territories, Russian lands. They're talking about sending NATO troops to Ukraine, but we remember the fate of those who were sending their soldiers to Russia in the past. And now, if they send troops NATO troops to Ukraine, then the consequences will be much more tragic. And the entire uh, entire building is applauding Vladimir Putin. Now they know that, you know, we, we have weapons that can strike their territories. So what they're making up, they're scaring the world. That's that brings that brings world closer to the conflict uh using nuclear weapons don't they understand that they forgotten what the war is but we remember we went through wars we understand what the war is they don't they're saying for them it's just cartoons, the war. Folks, this is a very serious threat that Putin is making to the USA, to Canada, to Europe. He's threatening you, make no mistake about it. He says this, all the actions of the USA and the satellites are um, deconstructing a system of stability in the world. We uh, in the world, we as the world uh, must come up with a new system of security and stability. We're ready to participate. Folks, he was threatening you. I don't know where you're sitting in Europe and you say in Canada, but know that he just threatened you directly. He threatened to bring the war onto your land. The world is in uh, fast change right now. We saw the changes in the past and the changes are happening now. And the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India and China are going to be um, creating 38% of global GDP. And then the G7 countries will uh, decrease GDP, their G combined GDP will decrease to 28. There's, not, no, there's nothing you can do against these tendencies. The collective West is declining, you know, the rest of the world is growing. He's giving the numbers right now. He's bragging about bricks, he's praising bricks. In my mind, folks, that's nonsense. This uh, 
throwing the numbers in the air about the BRICS countries and G7. Master manipulator. He's trying to manipulate the numbers. You know what? I should um, take a look at these numbers and do a stream tonight detailing his speech. It's really difficult for me to analyze it on the go. He's speaking in my headphones, you know. But I got to I got to call this bullshit. I'm going to you know what, that's going to be a long address, um, one plus hours, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do excerpts tonight, the most interesting excerpts, and I'm going to analyze them. He's saying that uh, then there's a new partnership of the Asian countries and Russia, and Russia is jumping Onto a Chinese program, one belt, one way. Russian and Russia and Africa are partners now. Africa is becoming stronger, and they're claiming the rights for sover sovereignty. And Russia is partnering with Arabic states, the Middle East. Arabs are our new friends. We're going to be strengthening our friendship and partnership with them. And also we're going to be doing the same in Latin America. We're going to be spreading our language, our culture into different countries. Well, uh, the priority is the former Soviet Union countries, of course. Now he's talking about... Russia. Russia is so large, so rich, so wonderful, so beautiful. There's an expo going on in Moscow right now. It's called uh, Russia. And then he's talking about that. Oh, Collective West. Bad, bad, bad. Life is decaying in the, in the West, and Russians, Russians choose life. Russians choose f traditional values. Russia is facing a problem, a demographic crisis. Fewer and fewer children are born in Russia. This is basically talking about how few Russians uh, bear children. So he's calling for uh, to work hard to convince Russians to have more children. He's asking church to get involved. Large uh, family with many children must become a foundation of Russian society. And everyone is applauding right now. And I also, he says that also joins to the applauding, you know. And then... Uh, <laughs> he's saying that uh, the government will be taking extra steps to support 
families with children. Well, obvious, they need more people. Russia needs more soldiers. The plans are, you know, he threatened the West. The plans are for more wars, more soldiers. <coughs> That's, he didn't say that. I didn't quote Putin. That's from the author, from me. Oh, he's, uh, wait a second. Poverty. Putin's favorite topic. Poverty. In 2000, there were 42 million people below poverty line. Now, 13 and a half live below poverty line. And of course, it's too much too, but Russian government is working hard on fixing that. And then now he's telling about how uh, measures of support. Oh, so much, you know. 11 million people are getting child support from the government. So, you know, child support is like you know, 50 bucks a month, something like that. How easy it has become to apply for child support. You know, now you can do it electronically. Before you had to walk into an office, social social care office. So the poverty is still a problem. Nine percent of uh, Russia's population are poor, below poverty line, and then. Families with many children, 30% below poverty line. Our goal is to 2030. Uh, by 2030, we must decrease the number of poor Russians to 7 million, like half it. Then we have to take care of uh, families with many children. Very difficult, very difficult task. Blah, blah, blah. We're all for good against all the bad. So now we are starting a new national project. It's called Family. There will be initiatives. And I'm going to talk about them right now. Folks, I'm not even going to translate. He's naming ways how Russian government will support more um, families. Let me, let me tell you my Constantine's take on how to help families. It's actually very simple. You stop the war. You stop mobilization. You stop drafting young boys into the army and sending them for death. And then you mind your own business. Well, you don't mind our business. You don't um, tax us. You know, make taxes very light. And you don't push us with anything, okay? Get off our backs. And we're going to manage. We're going to do just fine on our own. We're going to work. We're going to earn. We're going to make money. We're going to make products, sell them. Just governments stay away. And this is how the best help, how you can help us families in Russia. He's talking how um, millions of Russian f people are living much better than, than, than before in terms of they, they got new apartments, new houses. It's not like the government, very strange, not like the government is giving apartments away. No. Russians are buying, they're building the apartments, the houses with their own hands, 
But somehow Putin is bragging about that. What does he have to do with uh, Russians living better uh, in better apartments? What does the government have to do with that? So he's still talking about how uh, Russian government is going to help more to large families. So uh, subsidized mortgages will be available for uh, families with many children. Putin. <sighs> Create economy that will allow the head of the family to go and have a decent, good-paying job. Do not subsidize him. Just give him an opportunity to work and make good living. He'll take care of everything himself. So far, it's blah, 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 folks. But I take it that he, he will leave important stuff if he is about to say important stuff towards the end of his um, address. More. He's saying there should be less red tape uh, for large families. Well, first they create red tape. They've been creating red tape for the past 20 years. And now they want to reduce it. It's perfect example how government works for you folks. Look at Russia and learn from our mistakes. Do not make your own. You know, if you leave your government unchecked, politicians unchecked, you will get another Russia. Are you are you serious? Oh, oh, oh my gosh! Oh my, I, <sighs> folks, I don't even want to translate. Oh, look, Vladimir Putin said, and he's bragging about it. Clearly, bragging about it. He's proudly saying that. Look, I propose to introduce this new measure that will help large families save money you know a family of three i think he said don't quote me on that because it's just you know so much information but something like every month a family of three based on these measures that i would like to introduce will be saving extra 1300 rubles so you understand 1300 rubles is 15 dollars at the current price, $15. He is bragging about that in a national, uh, in the address to the National Assembly. The president of the largest country in the world. He's claiming the biggest, the baddest, you know, the, the most powerful country in the world. And then he's saying that. Am I crazy? Why, why, why I'm not taking it easily, but Russian people are taking it easy. You know, like, what is going on here? He's giving more subsidies to Russian, Russian families. Oh, those who need care, they need to get a little extra money, another thousand a month probably, something like that. Folks, he's talking about these things that seem wonderful, but they're just small. Let's say he just uh, proposed to increase twice, to, to, to increase by 200% uh, tax return for the second, second child. And then uh, to double 
that for the third child. So basically, if a family has second child, it will be receiving from the government 2.8 thousand rubles, which is $300, and it's just one-time event. And for third, if the third child is born, family would get 6,000 rubles, which is $700. Does he even know how much thing, things cost in Russia? Does he even know how much a plane ticket costs? But say to go on vacation in Russia, say from uh, Russian uh, Russian, you know, capital Moscow, St. Petersburg to Sochi, to the seaside. You know, every parent wants to take his or her child to the sea does he know that one ticket one way costs about 15,000 rubles round trip 30,000 rubles so you understand in compare prices in Russia and then he's bragging about uh, when a child second child is birth Russian family can save you know $300 and then the third child is born one time savings of $700 this guy is delusional what the heck is going on? And that's the president of Russia addressing the elites and the Russian people. Vladimir Putin is bragging that consumption of alcohol has fallen recently. That's not true. All independent experts are saying Russians have started drinking more. He's either misinformed or he's lying. He's bragging that in the recent year, the government has built 350 sports facilities throughout Russia. Children's stadiums, different fields, football fields, hockey, probably hockey rings. 300 in the entire Russia. He's bragging about that. I'm feeling like I'm in a mad circus, okay? Next year, Russia starts uh, a major uh, program, federal program of renovating the uh, kindergartens in Russia. Eighteen and a half thousand Russian schools, they need to be rebuilt. And that's Russia is going to, Russian government is going to rebuild those schools. Eighteen and a half thousand schools throughout Russia. Am I the only one who has a question? Look, dude, you've been the president for the past 24 years. What have you done? You are bragging that you're going to fix problems that have been stockpiling. It was you who helped them stockpile. What? This is a mad circus. I was in a hurry. I didn't make tea. I want to make ask my mom to make me a tea. <laughs> There's a problem. Not enough schools in Russia. Some kids study in three shifts. My gosh, Vladimir. You've been the president. You're not just becoming the president of Russia. You've been the president for the past 24 years. What have you been doing as the president?
uh, so much Russian government is doing for the youth of Russia. And uh, we're going, the Russian government is going to start a new program. The Youth of Russia National Project. The project of the future for the future. <laughs> so this is the mission and responsibility of us Russians for our youth. Well, our youth is dying in the trenches of Ukraine and they're killing the youth of Ukraine. Dude, what are you talking about? Something interesting I'm going to be talking about tonight. He's going to have uh, to install a new profession. Basically, there's a ideology... Uh, workers will be installed in schools and in universities. That's how I understand it. Folks, I'll definitely be doing um, deep analysis of his speech. And I'm going to be streaming about that later. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll find the most interesting, most important parts of his speech. I'll cut out all blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll uh, definitely tell you my opinion, my takes on what he said today. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. He's basically talking that the Russian government needs to pay more attention to how teachers and um, other, uh, you know, doctors and other people who work for the government and get paid by the government, they... You should be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Face palm, folks. That's all I gotta... Face palm. But people are believing him. Now, why why everyone is listening and um, applauding to what he's saying about the future? He's saying we have so many problems. We saw everywhere: education, medicine, healthcare, uh, everywhere except for the military industrial complex where everything is fine. So, but everything else needs attention. Families need attention. Uh, youth needs atten need a needs attention. What have you been doing for the past 24, uh, 24 years? Keeping up with the Putin. I'm sorry. He's just talking blah, blah, blah. I need some tea. You know, so far, it sounds like a typical, typical, um, typical presidential campaign. A politician goes around and tells what he will do if he's elected or she's elected the president. Again, sorry for repeating it, but hey, this is your... Um, Fifth, fifth term. This is your. This is going to be your twenty-fifth year as the president. Why? It's crazy. Don't 
talking about education right now. Oh, everything is bad. There are problems and we need to perfect everything. We need to perfect the process of education. We got to give uh, graduates of high schools, give them a chance. If he fails, he's <laughs> talking about... Putin is talking about high school seniors, saying if his high school senior fails an exam, we have to, this is government's responsibility to give him a chance to take that exam again. <laughs> Why don't they just study harder at school? Now to the economy. Oh, that's my favorite part. Russian economy was doing better than most of world's countries last year. Better than all countries of the G7, the satanic West, you know. I don't even know how to translate that. Putin saying that Russian economy was growing better than uh, most other countries in 2023 because of the foundation, strong foundation that was made during the past 10 years. As an economist, I don't even know how to comment that. What is he talking about? Спасибо. Мам made me some tea. Хочешь? Не? Подойдешь? Покажешься? Просто покажись. Вон туда. Все, давай. It's crazy. He's saying that this is just the beginning. And Russian economy has bright future. Next year, Russia will enter the fourth largest economies of the world. Well, Mr. Putin, I beg to differ. <laughs> so, there are two biggest problems. Well, at least he agrees with me on this one. Two problems right now the Russian economy is facing. First, lack of people. So Russia has a lot of youth. Young people are plentiful. Young population is growing. We'll see how many will be left in Russia by 2030. Now I start liking it, folks. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Uh, this is funny. This is this is funny. This is it gets interesting. Blah 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 is gone. Basically, Vladimir Putin is saying that Russia is facing difficulties, lack of people, but at the same time, the youth, youth young population is growing. By 2030, there will be lots of young people, and Russia's uh, goal is to have them as professionals. Well, I thought there's freedom in Russia, and you can do anything you want to. But the Russian government doesn't think so. It thinks otherwise. It thinks that you got to be a professional and work for the government, work for good of your country. Uh, 
And then uh, he said, no, please, all companies, you know, in, uh, factories, uh, scientific centers, please invite, invite uh, high school students. So they get interested. And then, then they'll go and teach uh, at schools and then they learn, uh, not teach, they will learn at, at, at the schools and universities and then they will become professionals. We need that. Because we need one million professionals by 2028. We need them to work. That's that's the purpose of uh, educating kids. Basically, he is addressing the problem that I've been talking about: lack of people. Bad, bad problem. I agree. But it's not going to get any better. Again, later later today, I already know what I have to say about this. And of course, Russian government is will be helping. It's showering, showering companies with money. So they... Uh, Learn, uh, they teach students and they create professionals and so forth. So we need higher education. We need that higher education to grow. I think that he'll jump to the next topic, the lack of technologies. So he acknowledges that there's a problem. Russia lacks technologies. Surprise, surprise. And then what he's going to be doing is expanding universities, building more campuses. So more younger uh, Russians will go and learn things and discover things and research things. He wants to make uh, he wants to make government make life in Russia attractive for Russians. That's the priority of Russian government. No shit genius. What have you been doing for the past 24 years? This speech reminds me of something. His speech is... What, what is the analogy? What, what can I bring? Well, while it's blah, 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 I'll give you an analogy. Imagine Titanic hit by an iceberg, the iceberg. Uh, water is flooding the compartments down below. But up on the decks, in the upper deck, higher class, uh, at the steerage, no one really knows what's going on. And then the captain of the ship gets all the chefs and cooks together, servants, and saying, hey, uh, you know, we really ought to serve better quality food. It's going to be much tastier for the people, for the passengers. You know, your service must be must so much more quality, you know, so much better. And this is what he's saying right now, basically. <laughs> now, the next problem. Technological uh, lacking of Russia.
And that's going to be blah, blah, blah about science. Mega science. It says the best in the world. No one else possesses mega science. Uh, some kind of equipment. Mega science. We have very mighty scientific infrastructure. Well, <laughs> microelectronics is very advanced and so forth. You know, my. Uh, Please, forgive me. Perhaps I'm being dumb here. Perhaps, you know. But answer me one question. How this mighty powerful scientific base has not produced any technology? Any? No. Zilch. Zero. How is this possible? Such brilliant scientists in Russia. Such brilliant universities. Such brilliant scientific base. Foundation. And Nothing. My head is spinning. I don't understand. It's like he's not talking about the reality. He's talking about something else. And of course, the government, his next 10 minutes, he'll be saying how Russian government is going to be spending so much money to build even bigger scientific foundation. Then most of all, that money is going to be stolen by his bodies. So I gotta take a break, sorry. back I am back oh looks like I haven't missed much now that's interesting that's interesting that's interesting that's very interesting it's getting interesting I hear uh, the U.S. Assad rhetoric. We must build technological chains, so different factories build different parts. Well, in market economy, everyone decides what to build on their own, okay? In uh, planned economy, you build uh, logistics, logistic chains, you know, been there, done there. Again, I'll be talking about it tonight. Oh, I have lots to talk about. High tech. He's talking about high tech. By <laughs> genius. Genius, 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 genius. Genius, my friends, Putin is genius. You see, I don't even know, I don't hear what he's speaking about. This is perfect. No, he said that he is setting a goal by 2030. Amount of high-tech product, products on the Russian market, domestically created, domestically produced, must increase by 50% easily achievable right now it's zero and if you take zero and increase it by 50 percent it's still zero so he's setting a goal now and he's gonna reach it in 2030 <laughs> he's genius
Oh, and then uh, productivity must be must be increased. Government's government's goal too to increase productivity is uh, goal of business. Okay, business decides what kind of productivity is necessary, but I guess not not anymore in Russia. Blah 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 about uh, increasing productivity. <laughs> I start liking it, folks. <laughs> now Putin has actually said the truth. He said another goal is by whatever year, 2030, to enter top 25 countries with amount of industrial robots, you know, production robots. He said, considering what we have right now, it's not going to be easy to do. Because <laughs> right now it's zilch. <laughs> 25. He doesn't, doesn't say 5, he doesn't say 10, he says 25. What is the country number 25? Georgia, Armenia, you know? Oh, he's increasing engineering schools. 100 engineering centers. I can say a thing or two about engineering centers. I've worked in the engineering company for the past 20 years. I know everything about it. This guy is out there. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm listening to him, and I'm thinking one thing. Does this guy believe in what he's saying, or he doesn't? He's just saying it because it needs to be said. Because somehow, <laughs> I get a feeling that he does believe <laughs> in what he's saying. And if he's lying, outright lying, that'd be just... The best acting in the world, you know. Come on, buddy, I'm getting died here. Please, get to the point. What are you going to do with Transistria? What are you going to do in Ukraine? Are you going to say? It's been over an hour now. Uh, you know, folks, I should be singing a little bit now. Dream on, dream on, dream on. <laughs> that's what, that's basically the song about Putin's speech. <sighs> Buddy, you destroyed Russian industry. You destroyed manufacturing. Because everyone is dying. Everyone who's not connected with a military industrial complex. What in the world are you saying? What in the world are you... What kind of goals are you setting up? Stop the war in Ukraine. Repent. You know, uh, restore what you have done in Ukraine. And then start rebuilding your economy. And you're saying us that everything is rosy and peachy and nice and it's going to be even better. Oh my gosh, folks, I'm sitting there listening to Putin. I'm thinking, why the hell did I leave Russia? Russia is such a f nice country. You know, it's it's trying to stop the war. It never started the war. You know, it's so peaceful. 
you know, it's uh, it's ready to negotiate, and everyone doesn't want to negotiate with it, but it's ready, it's open, and it, it's trying to reach out, and everyone snubs it. Its economy is great, foundation is strong, healthcare is good, schools, small problems, but generally excellent. You know, there will be so many more engineering centers. Education is going to be so much stronger. And right now he's talking about the manufacturing facilities, manufacturing in Russia. It's going to be, it's already good, but it's going to be even better. I'm sitting here thinking, should we go back? I'm going to, you know, these Russian schools, they're so wonderful. I want Michael to attend one. Yeah, that's, you know, listening to Putin... He makes you believe that Russia is just so freaking advanced. And the only problem is uh, not too many people live there and then people leave and, you know, not too many people to work. And uh, nearly zero industrial robots in Russia. Everything else is great. Now he's uh, talking about small and middle middle business, small business. Buddy, you killed small business in Russia. Your government that you built, your, the vertical of power, has killed small business in Russia. <sighs> Folks, I'm bored. I want to turn the comments on. Let me know what you think. There's blah, blah, blah. Once blah, blah, blah is over, I will stop the commenting and I will, uh, you know, switch back to his comment in his speech. Let me know what you think. Comments are on. We don't have moderators, so please behave and, uh, you know, no bad stuff. Joe's Rames, howdy. Putin, blah, 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 blah. Terry, howdy, howdy. Anders, howdy. Baker Stock. Torfin, hello, hello. As Watchwoman. No, he's talking about banks. Let me let me take a listen. Blah 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 blah. To the comments. So if you want me to, uh, you know, I'm still listening to Putin. So if you want me to notice uh, your my, your message, please put it in caps in orange. Baker stock, thank you. Just Terry, how do you do it? Um, I'm doing it because it's my country. It's falling apart. I I've pledged to do something. This is what I do. This is. <laughs> Trust me, it's not easy. Faith, howdy. Adnan, uh, watch my yesterday's stream. Uh, I say that uh, basically, I, not yesterday, day before yesterday, I explained that there's no money left. He's bluffing right now. He has no rubles to support anything anymore crazy howdy good good knob not good nubbin guten tag there you go pamela j folks putin putin has it's talking about one thing that he knows. He says, we're going to make everything great. And how? We're going to take government's money and we're going to flood you with money. And this is how he, he understands to make things great. Again, I'll be talking about it tonight. Mm. 
my gosh, Jason Carney is back. Jason, hey, thanks for the super chat, but listen, good to see you. Tell me, are you okay? Have you completely recovered? We keep on praying every single night. Thank you for the super chats. You know, I, I'm speechless. Thank you so much. Putin, blah, 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 blah. This chat is much more interesting now. I'm waiting for the very last part. Transistria. He's going to tell us what's up with the Transistria. Ukraine, the war, for how long? What are the plans? And I take it last 15 minutes or so. Jason, please let us know. what are you, Have you recovered? Are you well? Thank you so much for sponsoring 10 people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Natasha is out of the apartment right now. If she comes back, I will have her here on screen. So we finally could thank you, two of us. Iron Woodwork. Vladimir Putin saying that Private property must be protected in Russia. What is he talking about? He's destroying the private property right now. Say, no, 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 we're going to protect it. Dirk, thank you so much. Danke schon. I saw the message. I will reply a little later. I, I have not been able, not, not, not much time today. Peter, try to get some sleep before tonight. <laughs> I have so much analysis to do. After I'm done, uh, uh, you know, doing this, I'm going to get a transcript of his speech and I'm going to go and pick the best, well, the most interesting parts in the, and then analyze and then present it to you tonight. Getting better, still not 100% yet. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that you're getting better. Been praying for you, we'll continue praying. Jason, thank you so much. The champion of Inside Russia. Morning glory. Thank you. Putin is saying that uh, there should be so many, uh, like so much help for the small business. Again, he says one thing, he does completely different thing. And there's a good comment from Amitopia TV. Natasha and Afkirzin, you should do something about this. Uh, you know, friend, I don't know about Roman and Natasha, but I have been doing so much i've made my mission to do something about it and i've been doing something about it since the day i left russia and even before that and things i'm doing you know trust me they're plentiful and i just don't say them here on tv you know on, on youtube So he's just announced, I missed it, he announced some kind of amnesty. Boy, uh, Kachina. At the same time, he just, uh, JKUB Music, thank you so much. Adnan, 
Of course, Putin did not say anything about infrastructure. As if it doesn't exist. It's not a problem in Russia, you know? Vladimir Putin is ordering uh, the tax revenue service in Russia to audit fewer companies. Amnesty for draft? No, 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 no. That's some kind of uh, tax amnesty. Hang on. I'll tell you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Real quick, I missed it. I was talking to you, I shot a Putin off, but he um, offered a new financial instrument for Russian people, uh, treasury bills for the term for more than three years so basically remember i've been telling you how russian government is going to be coming up with money to f keep on financing war they run out of their own money and now they're going to be tapping into the pockets of russians okay they're going to be offering them t-bills just like they do in america but uh later on that but i was right again Joe Dreams, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's funny. Multitasking. It's actually not that difficult because here I have blah, blah, blah. And right here in chat, I have real people, good people, very interesting people inside Russia community. Alex Alva. Propaganda. Russians are listening right now and they're like, oh, he's so great. We gotta vote for him. He's gonna make, he's gonna fix everything. He's gonna make it so much better. Oh, war bonds. Thank you. Thomas, thank you. Steve Evans, <laughs> I know. Thank you so much. What in the world are you talking about? I'm sorry. I wish you could hear what he's saying. Laura, thank you. Have a coffee on me and I hope you feel better soon. Thank you so much. Having a tea right now? I will have a coffee tomorrow morning at Tashkent Breakfast Club. Switzerland in the house. Cyber writer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. <sighs> He's saying that Russian government's going to improve the system, that Russian uh, citizens have better access to doctors and... Um, it's going to be made so much easier. Any person could be sign up online to sign and pick a doctor. <sighs> what the fudge? Oh, we're going to make all the medical services mass and affordable. My mom is having back problems with low back. She's been trying to get a doctor to go and see a doctor in Rostov for, I don't know, months and months. And the next available slot is for June. Okay, and then he's saying that it's going to be so much more, so much easier to sign up electronically to get services. It's delusional. Mm. 
boy. Uh, thank you so much. Доброе утро, спасибо. Thank you. After he's done, I have a short summary because I'm getting the big picture of what he's saying. It's blah, blah, blah to listen in detail, but the big picture is actually very interesting. And uh, where, where is John Galt? Ednan, Putin should start a special canal operation. Tony Nagy, howdy. Now he's talking about uh, artificial intelligence. Putin, please get yourself and get some Russians real intelligence first, and then only then talk about artificial intelligence. Laura, again, thank you so much. Laura Harrington. Breakthrough. We need breakthrough. <laughs> we already had breakthrough. I think most of you watched my video on the breakthroughs <laughs> in the heating pipes, <laughs> in the water mains. Gary, go. Uh, thank you. Good example with Zimbabwe. Uh, they taught us in schools that example. Yes, uh, quantitative easing. It's not going to work well, I'm telling you. Yes, there will be many millionaires in Russia and perhaps billionaires, but that's it. KG1, thank you so much. Putin's fair talk. Great, great. Tale f uh, name for the stream. Thank you so much. Putin's Fair Tales. <laughs> this is great. I'm going to do that. KG1, if you don't mind, this is how I'm going to call today's stream. See, before he was talking about, he would take one topic, education, kindergartens, you know, hospitals. Now he goes all over the place. Now he's talking about provincial development. What needs to be done in the provinces? Dave Strains, thank you so much again, my friend. No, you know, not required. Uh, you being here is already great. Thank you so much. Uh, he's forgiving two-thirds of all debts that um, provinces have. Uh, to the federal government. He's basically forgiven two-thirds of those loans. That's all government's money anyway. It doesn't make any sense. Mr. Wires, where is all that money coming from all these programs? Bombs, plane, and tanks. Well, my friend, watch my stream from yesterday. Okay, it's called... Uh, Let me see how it's called. Uh, where has Russia's money gone? Okay, that's how it's called. And I dive into the details or where the money for these programs are. It's funny because I did the stream two days ago. And basically, the bottom line of that stream is Russia's money is gone, spent. And now he's picturing, uh, painting a picture of the government spending trillions and trillions of rubles for all these programs. Where money will come from? Good question. Well, Putin's fairy tales, you know. Uh, hang on one second.
Berg. You see, the problem with provinces is that they are not independent. The governors are placed, the decisions are made in the Kremlin, the governments are sent from Moscow, and they, you know, their only goal is to satisfy those in the Kremlin who put them into their chairs, uh, governor's chairs, okay? And that's all you need to know about Russian provinces, po politics and policies. Put Barbiev, put Barbiev. <laughs> Ednan, thank you. Sonia, Sonia from Croatia, Harvatia, howdy, howdy. I got allergies to Constantine, but I hope you feel better. Morning glory, uh, feeling okay, it's just it's that time of year, you know. Paul uh, Gilbert, thank you so much. The world needs, uh, thank you, T-Fund. This is quick tea. I wasn't making it, so it's a tea sachet. I never usually do that, but it's actually not bad. It's uh, Twinings. I brought it a long time from Dubai, six months ago. Quick fix. You know, I always brew my tea. Mods are getting much needed rest. Well, I initially decided to do it uh, chat free, uh, but I kind of got bored. I'm sorry. Uh, so far, so good. This guy is, this speech is it's boring. It's blah, 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 blah. Seems like he's speaking about the same things. He's like goes in circles. I don't get it. Kash, give me an opportunity to speak in front of Russia to address Russian people. I'll do a much better job than him speaking. That's that's for sure. I've never heard Putin speak with passion ever. Tony, me neither. Tasmania, Australia. Thank you so much, Roland. Fantastic to see. Just imagine this. This is awesome. This is one of the things I love about YouTube in general and about our community because people are all over the world and I can't even imagine how far Tasmania is from me right now. But this is, we're just sitting and you know, talking to each other. Unbelievable. Thank you. Boris, <coughs> thank you. Do you know the channel Prosta Putin? No, I don't know. Nearly 6 million subs and hundreds of videos of AI. Putin doing TikTok dances. I won't even check it out, Boris. You know, um, I don't care. Leslie Fleming, thanks for showing up. Don't believe a word Putin says. <laughs> you don't have to say that. You can't believe any word he says. The only word I believe is that when he said that we're going to increase the number of uh, domestic products, high-tech products, by 50% to zero. That I believe. Pamela J. Howdy. Tyson Taylor. Howdy, howdy. Uh, find us, uh, Denmark, howdy, howdy. Why Putin never visits Scandinavia? Well, I suggest he goes and visits the Netherlands, the Hague, you know, nice city, I heard, quiet, tourist attraction, you know. Why not? KG1, thank you so much. 
I need coffee. <laughs> That's yes, they do. I do, I do. Thank you. Ironwood Workman, 4 a.m. Wow. No, we it's like hour and a half already. So all he's talking about, folks, is, look, government will help. We'll create this national project. We'll put so much money into it. We'll create that national. We'll cut taxes. You know, we'll help. We'll get grants to families. And th this is how he's... Th I don't think he, he doesn't understand... He understands how the government can help in other ways. He's just basically promising to throw money into different, different directions. Green-eyed lady, yeah, I know. <laughs> Earl Grey, howdy. Put in my pocket. <laughs> uh, Jared Troy, if Julian Assange went to Russia, would he be free? If he was, if he's bashing Western governments. I think he'd be free, but if he started having asking, started having the same questions that he has to the Western governments to Russia, he'd be arrested and claimed foreign agent uh, sent into inside Russia to destroy Russian sovereignty, to weaken it from the inside, and so forth. You know, of course he would not be free. Finland, Caprifolia one. Thank you so much. Warm greetings to you too. Mr. Wires, this is like the U.S. State of the Union's address on steroids. This is better. This is like a stand-up show, you know? <laughs> you know, if I were Russian, I probably would believe it. <laughs> Dirk, I haven't heard about Snowden much lately. State of Confusion address. That's a good one, too. Uh, so, State of Confusion address. Dave, thank you so much. That's a good one. Made a note of that. Queensland. Wow, Queensland. And a uh, long time from here, a uh, long, long way from here, and it's fantastic to see People from such remote locations. It's awesome. I, I'm loving it. Thank you. Russian Dimpl Diplomatic Comedy Show. No. Aussie Week. Uh, Aussie UK. Um, I disagree with that. It's not Russian Diplomatic Comedy Show. Diplomatic would be happening in, the, in New York and the UN. That's where Russian Diplomatic Shows happen. This is... Uh, stand-up comedy, diplomatic comedy show. Uh, it's it's a comedy show for Russian citizens. Okay, that's what it is. Volkswagen three N Passat. Greetings, howdy. Fidel was more passionate. Oh yeah, don't compare Putin to Fidel. New England, cause good morning all. Howdy, stone dust. Clinton, Tennessee, USA. Um, Preet, Pahos. Uh, how many people will show up at Navalny's funeral? A lot, a lot. Um, the funeral is tomorrow. 
I will be covering it, probably not on a live stream, but somehow. Uh, my friends in Moscow are going to visit the funeral, so uh, I'll have someone on the inside. M. Hamakin, I'm doing a lecture tonight on Putin, so just want to say thank you for doing this translation. You work in general. Love from Denmark. Look, before you do the lecture, I don't feel like I'm doing such a great job translating because it's very, it's really hard to translate, to listen. I'm not a like um, synchronous, synchronous translator. I cannot do that, okay? Um, I'm put on the spot uh, by not knowing a few words that he says, and I think it's a pretty bad translation what I'm doing. But I want to give you the big picture, all right, before you do your lecture. What he's doing right now is he's delivering some kind of a twisted presidential campaign um, thesis, okay, as if he was... Uh, a runner-up, okay? He's throwing up in the air such numbers, programs. Basically, his one message is Russian government is about to start helping so much, is about to start changing life in Russia for the better, okay? And how are we going to do that? We're going to take money that we have plenty that they don't anymore, as we know. And they were going to flood you with money. And that's going to solve all the problems, okay? Literally, right now, as I'm speaking right now, he takes, oh, we're going to start a new program called Clean Water. We're going to make water clean, the drinking water clean for all Russians. Oh, we're going to start this program. We're going to start that program. So that's basically like a fireworks finale. That's what he's doing right now. His idea is... We will make everything great in Russia. We're going to take money, we're going to flood, and we know how to do that. <coughs> the thing is, that's not the, how the government works. First, he steals money from businesses or from citizens in many ways. And then he, he, he promises to give the money back. He will not. Okay? Uh, he is financing a very costly war in Ukraine. He's out of money. And if he still had the money, you ask him this question. What was he doing for 24 years that's been president? Why didn't he start all these wonderful programs back in 2000, 2001, 2000? By now, all Russians would be drinking clean water, okay? Well, somehow 24 years have passed and nothing happened. Another thing. This is the only way of helping he knows. He doesn't say, hey, the government, we need to make the government small. We need the government to interfere less. We need the government mind its own business to keep its hands out of your pockets. We need to um, lighten up the load for you as much as, as, as possible. No, that's how the government works, okay? That's the most effective way. He, instead of uh, the government flooding with money, he needs to do the following. He says... Do as you please. We will make it extremely easy for you to start small businesses, to start companies. We'll try to create atmosphere um, where you will be able to get cheap, long money for your projects so you can invest. We'll bring investors in and so forth. That's the, how the government works. Instead, all he's talking about for hour and a half plus, he is promising to flood everyone with money. That's all. Whew. So thank you, friend. Yorkie mom, howdy. Please let me know. Um, should we keep on praying for you? You were on the list a long time ago. Um, do you need to, to be prayed for or you're okay now? He's promising to develop public transportation. Again, what have you been doing for the past 24 years, okay? Where's, what is the current state's status of public transportation? Disaster, falling apart. Why? Oh, we're going to make it so much better by 2030, you know? 
Roman, uh, very difficult. Thank you so much. And uh, Jason Carney, thank you again. Uh, Jared Troy, I wonder if Constantine would get on with Aussie uh, Cossack. Well, Aussie Cossack was on this channel. He left me a message about a year ago. He said, you are a traitor of Russian people. Um, love to see the two of you on the panel together. I would never do that with Aussie Cossack. He thinks I'm a traitor and he believes that. And uh, I don't care about the guy, really. I just, I could care less. Is this very different from his usual speeches? No. Helix. Uh, no, not really. But this is more intense. This is more intense. More numbers, more programs, more money, more promises, more everything. And I'm waiting at the very end. He Will he say anything about Transistria? Or not? Will he annex Transistria? <laughs> Let's wait for the grand finale. Now he's talking about, oh, let's make the air of Russia clean. Pollution must be lowered so much. Again, what have you been doing for the past 24 years? What has government done? Nothing? How much money have been spent? Harp 4803, thank you. Yorkie mom, I'm very glad to hear that. I'm going to show to Lorna and mommy today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank goodness. Rachel, just a quick FYI, because you were looking for Russian stream to show the Telegraph is actually live streaming the address without translation. I couldn't do it. You saw me uh, trying to get us to stream, but I'm not a big tech guy. Perhaps they have like the technical team at the Telegraph. I didn't know. I failed to do that. Давай сюда, He's spending lots of money from taxpayers. <laughs> Cage one, he's spending them all. He's blowing them all. Okay, that's there's no much, not much money left. Poseidon tests have failed. Thank goodness, Mark. I don't know much about that, but I am very glad to hear what you're saying. Because I don't like Putin, the president of my country, while I'm still Russian citizen, threatening the West, saying, oh, we have this and that and that and that, and then we're going to take the war until you land. Not him, me, me, because I'm the taxpayer, I'm the voter, I'm responsible, okay? He makes decision, but that's executive decision, but it's our country. Yorkie mom, I don't know. I'm not an expert, I have no clue about that. Rumors have different, say different things, I don't know who to believe. Will we get to the end of it? Two hours, six minutes and counting. Leslie Fleming, we have Putin want to be here in US people, I fear. Well, if someone wants to Putin to be in the USA as a president, I have one suggestion for a person like that. 
come to Russia and live for for six months at least, not as tourist, but as a resident. After after come back to the USA and tell if you still like Putin to be the president of the USA. He's standing. How long does he usually speak? That's a longer speech than usual. Uh, he rarely speaks that long. Ecological tourism. Now, for goodness sake, this guy is saying that how the government is going to organize ecological uh, paths in Russian uh, forests and stuff like that. And of course, the government is going to spend lots of money for that. So they're organizing ecological tourism inside Russia. What the heck? Jared Troy, it's today. Yes, the people of Transistria have asked him to interfere if Moldova tries anything sneaky. Three days ago they did. David G, uh, this is actually a very strong point. Uh, he justifies his actions by that election, saying, it's not just me, Russian people have vested power into me to make these decisions. So that's what the point Harp, I'm worried about Transistria acting up. Transistria will not do anything without a um, word from order from the Kremlin, you know? Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. I think so, the too. Thank you so much, Mira7273. Ecological tourism in Chelyabinsk. Zrage, thank you so much. You're brilliant. You are brilliant. Yes, go and have ecological tourism to Chelyabinsk. To any... Now he's talking about building another major highway to Sochi. Sochi. Sam K, you are the legend. Thank you. <sighs> My gosh. He's talking about building roads, highways, new highway. One small highway, not very long one, about 100 miles. Absolutely useless going through the mountains. I'll tell you about, I'll tell you about that later, okay, in details. Ironwood work, work man, thank you so much. For letting me know. Dave agreed. <laughs> Thank God I was not born in Russia. <laughs> no jokes today, SMK. Well... I don't know. Alex, I absolutely agree. You can't really drive Lotus that fast. Oh, now Russia needs to build new planes. Well, Putin's friend promised 1,000 new planes by 2030 to Vladimir Putin. He promised that on public. 1,000. That's two planes a day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I 
you know what sonny uh and harp i hope i hope that he will not say anything about trans history i hope but there were rumors that uh, he might annex it or he might say something about steps that russia start will start taking towards annexation so keeping my fingers frost he will not say anything about it and if he doesn't if he doesn't say anything at the end it's going to be the biggest blah blah speech i've ever heard from putin <laughs> paper planes <laughs> model planes <laughs> ordered ordered in china <laughs> you know small 130 or 100 uh models <laughs> He won't announce anything controversial. Well, we'll see. We'll see today. This is magic. I left, I come back, same. He's talking about... My God, he's talking about smallest details. How trucks must pass faster through uh, customs checks. You're the president, for goodness sake, you know. Earl Lucky, thank you so much. Uh, long time no see. <laughs> Sam K has a joke everyone should know by now. Putin. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Jared Troy, is China helping Russia out with any military equipment? I don't think so, because if China gets busted, uh, you know, something is found on the battlefield made in China by the Western, by Ukraine, and that's made public. Uh, the West will put sanctions on China, and that's China does not need that. And Cohen, thank you so much for coming. Please come back tonight. Alex, while I have your attention, I've been listening to you for years, early in the morning, live when I'm driving to work daily. Thank you, Alex. Fantastic to see everyone. It, it's great to see, you know, there are so many people view and I see the views, okay? But it's great when uh, people come out and saying, hey, it's me behind those views. I've been watching you for years and for a couple years and this is great. This, is, this makes this whole thing so much more personal for me. Thank you very much. And seeing you, Carol, good to see you. Long time no see. Has he said anything about newly shot down Su-34 fighter jet this morning by the Ukrainians? Well, as far as I understand, they shot them down like every single day almost. And, uh, the, well, first I got to figure out, was it Ukrainians or was it friendly fire? <laughs> and no, he hasn't said, of course. And they're acting as if this doesn't exist he hasn't said anything about what's going on in ukraine whatsoever something different with the sound hang on dirk uh, my sound is the same here Hmm, interesting. My sound is absolutely the same. Uh, 
Okay. No, no, he's getting better. Mexico, howdy, howdy. No, he's talking about the war. Hang on. He speaks with the member, uh, the soldiers of the war often. I doubt that, but okay. And then they're all defending Russia with weapons in their hands. I guess they're defending Russia from Ukrainians on Ukrainian soil, you know. I don't understand where he's getting at. Oh, I guess there are some people sitting in this uh, building are those who came from the war. Hugely important, hugely important, hugely important what he's saying now. He's saying the new elites are emerging. The new elites. The new elites are emerging in Russia. He's talking about those who are fighting in Ukraine right now. Soldiers, officers, leadership. They must be made the new elites of Russia. They must be trusted with new russia you know they must come back and lead big companies lead, lead corporations lead the government and so forth he's talking about the elites and the elite has the elites have discredited themselves they are considering themselves a caste higher caste so they stole so much money in the previous years that's interesting They are not the elites. Those who... What? He's talking about his friends? What? But now the elite, the elites are those who are serving Russia. Who are fighting for Russia on Ukrainian soil. They're decent people. The new elites. Okay. And then the, the camera is showing these people in uniforms. Military uniforms, you know. He's launching a new program, okay, and this program is called, it's going to be called The Time of the Heroes, and this is an educational program. They're going to be educating this members of the soldiers, whatever, officers, and I guess that is going to be the... the um, Graduates of these programs, I think, will be promoted within Russian government, okay? So this is something very interesting, he said. Tony Argentina is looking really awesome these days. <laughs> yes, it does. Andre... Um, YouTube does that automatically. I cannot... It, it's going to take a couple days after the stream is over. That's how uh, closed captures appear, okay? I don't install them, but they're on, definitely. Pamela J, thank you. <laughs> Sound is very low in the key. Okay. Let me put it up. How about now? Is it better? Was this written by George Orwell? Clear view. Thank you so much. It's a brilliant question. I think George, George Orwell will be sitting in awe right now 
and thinking I couldn't even get close thinking this things things up. Thank you, thank you, friends. <laughs> Horl was an optimist, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Sorry about the sound. So now he's he's basically saying that this about this new program, new elites, how Russian society need to be changed. <sighs> Interesting. Interesting. Looks like he's wrapping up. Looks like he's wrapping up. About time. Folks, there's so much I want to talk about. I just need to prepare a bit. I need to analyze. I need... Please, tune in. It's going to be a good stream tonight. I'm tempted to call my tonight's stream. Call in for Putin's bullshit. Thinking, he's thanking the government for building such a magnificent uh, system of managing Russia, what's called the vertical of power. That's uh, the foundation of his, his power. FB, thank you. Uh, not worldwide. If all Russians did that, then things would change. Worldwide. Uh, first of all, Russian people would not know about that, okay? They they wouldn't be shown. Conrad Black, lessons. John, I think you already mentioned once. I have not had a chance, but you mentioned twice, I will do that. Conrad Black. John Richardson, thank you so much. That's what I try to do, to simplify politics. <laughs> like bread and butter, too. Sunny from San Diego. Howdy, howdy. One of my most favorite places in the world, by the way. San Diego. Why do we hear so little about life in Donbass under occupation? From who? From me or from, from, from propaganda? Life there sucks. That's why you are hearing it so little from the propaganda. They have nothing good to say. They only say things that are to their advantage, okay? They're acting as if people in Donbass do not exist. He's calling for soldiers to fight better, to fight courageously. Because all programs, plans, and so forth, they depend on the soldiers fighting in Ukraine right now. From the, They depend on courage and heroism on, of, of the soldiers. That's the first time he's mentioning the war.
Is this it? I'm This is it. This is it. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Russian anthem is playing in my ears. Thank you, but no thank you. You know what I need now? I need a scotch. I don't drink, but I... I could carry, I could use a scotch now because um, it's such a relief. It's, it's incredible. I was uh, in so much stress this past 24 hours when I learned that there are rumors that he would annex Transistria because that means bigger war. He didn't even touch that topic. Thank goodness. Thank you, Lord. Blah, blah, blah. The biggest blah, blah, blah I've ever seen. Okay, and I am very glad that he did blah, 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 because I'm going to call his bullshit out today. I got to get to work. Um, Mountain Dan, do you know we book by Evgeny Zamyatin? Not only I know, I was made to read it. It was part of a high school program. Okay, uh, so I know very much. I, I know very well, so yes, I do. <laughs> Beam, thank you so much. It's not so much listening. It, it's it's sitting there waiting for him to say, to announce a new word. That's just, that's really difficult. Uh, William, thank you so much. So over two hours and little to nothing on France, Germany, NATO, America. Now I do believe... He has nothing to try to convince himself he's in charge. He's beginning to, okay. He's, thank you. I, yes, he has nothing. He has nothing and he's, he's trying to convince others that he's in charge, you know. Uh, basically, folks, let me wrap it up. I'm tired. I want to go sleep, to be honest with you. Um, let me wrap it up. I was expecting something really important. I was expecting Transistria because there's an official... That's how the Russia works. Why was I so worried? Well, Transistria conflict has been going on for so many years, since 91, okay? And it's been... At first, it was a fight, huge fight. People were dying. And then uh, Russian peacemakers... I don't know the history of that well, but... Uh, lately, Transistria, well, it's always had Russian troops, about 6,000 Russian troops, and Moldova has been trying to remove the troops from Russia, okay, and the United Nations have, have has jumped, have jumped onto the boat, and then uh, back in 2018, the United Nations announced that Transistria is under Russian occupation, and this is serious stuff, right, and um, Russians have basically not given any choice, to anyone. <coughs> oh, please forgive me. So anyway, um, Russian troops are there. Trans-Eastern senators, deputies, whatever, they are completely under control from the Kremlin by the, by the Russians. <coughs> Excuse me. So, a um, couple days ago, Lavrov comes out and says that, hey, uh, Moldovian government is puppets, nothing but puppets of the Western governments, the USA and the, the European countries. And I heard that before. Same rhetoric, same thing he was saying about Ukraine. 
And then uh, what he did the next, uh, well, the next was the Transistrian deputies got together all of a sudden. That did not happen. The last time it happened in 2005 or 2006. And they appealed to Moscow, to Lavrov, to the Kremlin, to everyone, please protect us. There are so many hundreds of thousands of Russians living here. We need protection from Moldova, okay? And uh, this is, you know, this is like a classic playbook of how to annex land, Russian classic playbook. And this is what I was afraid. And then all of a sudden Putin announces that he's going to be doing this out of blue, this address to the... Um, Hang on. Anyway, so he was, you know, addressing the nation, the Federal Assembly. And then all these three things, they kind of come together. And that's why I thought that something... Something incredibly, incredibly crazy was going to happen. That's why I was so stressed, so stance anxious. And it was the biggest blah, blah, blah speech I've ever seen in my life from Vladimir Putin. Uh... <laughs> I wish I could reach your glass through the screen. Thank you, Boris. So uh, in my younger days, after a stress like that, I would have a large scotch and I'd go to bed. Now I'm having an English breakfast tea and I'm going to bed. <laughs> Thank you, friends. I'm really relieved. But oh my God, I'm going to be ruthless tonight. Come back. I'm going to make an um, announcement right now and I'm going to call it fairy tales, Putin's fairy tales. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for your support. You're awesome and you're absolutely rock. Friends, as usual, along with me as loud as you can, Carthago Delenda Est. I'll see you tonight.